Hello, my name is Claire and I have just finished calculating the total amount of money I have spent on The Sims 4 alone. So that's pets, kitchen stuff, get together. And that is five, $569.10. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say that's money entirely wasted because I really wanted laundry stuff, okay? But I guess what makes me a little worried is that I can't even get past the first hour of Far Cry 5, yet I have scooped up over a thousand hours of dictating the lives of little people with floating diamonds on their heads. So it occurred to me, why do we gravitate towards certain games and notably certain game genres? And is it possible that your preference of what kind of games you play says something about who you are? And in that case, I'm really worried. First person shooters, real time strategy, digital tabletop, action adventure, genres in video games really come in all shapes and sizes. Derived from a French derivative of the Latin word genus, which is also connected with the Greek word genos, which is derived from Proto-Indo-European. Okay, I'll stop. The word genre essentially means kind. The Oxford Dictionary defines genre as a particular type or style of literature, art, film, or music that you can recognize because of its special features. Because for some reason, humans have this thing for sorting stuff into categories, genres used to group things that share the same characteristics. Now, because Oxford does feck all in clarifying which characteristics are the ones to be grouped, the notion of genre in how it applies to video games reveals a very different purpose. Think about films and novels and how their genres are predominantly defined by setting and story. A crime novel will have an investigation set at a police station, a rom-com will have a love triangle, you know, the sort of tropes that we come to expect from these. But video game genres work entirely differently because they're not defined by narrative conventions, but by gameplay play conventions. A first person shooter is still a first person shooter regardless of whether it's set in space or a military base, as long as it uses a first person perspective camera and combat with ranged weapons. A simulation game is still a simulation game even when you can go from controlling a goat to a lawnmower, as long as there is a degree of player control and sandbox style carnage. While there are a ton of game genres out there, believe me, each with their own individual systems of gameplay, the most widely used classification generally lists eight major groups. action adventure, fighting, puzzle, role-playing, simulation, sports, and strategy. And even that doesn't cover it all if you want to count mobile games, tower defense games, exa games, and Christian games. They're a whole different breed. Now, question of the day. If you had to choose one or two from the big eight, which video game genre would you consider your favorite? Hope you've got them in your noggin because it's time for some psychoanalysis. To begin our assessment of why we love certain genres above others, we gotta ask ourselves why we actually play video games in the first place. Yes, genius, we play video games for fun. I'll admit I can't link some deep psychological reason I get a kick out of Dream Daddy Simulator, I just enjoy it. But if you hone out on the big picture and look through the games you play the most or gravitate towards most naturally, the patterns are there. When approaching why we play, many studies examine the link between the anticipated playing experience and selection intentions. This is just a really obnoxious way of saying that we choose to play certain games because we want to get certain things out of them. If we were to look at the action of playing games through a uses and gratifications approach, it's fair to say that we pick particular genres because we have an expectation that they will satisfy something we're craving. I mean, it seems pretty obvious when I say it out loud, but it's good to point out that there is an inherent intention behind what we choose to play, even when we don't realize it. An article written by two game developers, Christopher Clogg and Jesse Shell, suggests an interesting theory about this. They say that the ultimate satisfaction, the big thing we look for in playing video games, is control. No, not the game. An abstract notion of dominance and influence over events and situations. That's, that's what I mean. That's the control I mean. But see, control means different things for different games, and you'd be surprised to know that there are a lot of ways control can be achieved depending on the genre. I mean, the way we achieve it in RPGs is entirely different to how it's felt in playing sports sims, in fighting sims, in goat sims. Believe it or not, Clug and Shell actually have the perfect system to determine what kind of control you're looking for in life. And as I dive into their framework, I challenge you to think about what game our personality best suits you. So let's lightning round this baby. Number one, the competitor. Plays to be better than everyone else. Number two, the explorer. Plays to test the boundaries of the world and discover what others don't. Number three, the collector. Plays to hoard all the best stuff. Number four, the achiever. Plays for the challenge and to strive for those sweet rankings. Number five, the joker. Plays for the simple pleasures, for the fun and the friends. Number six, the director. Plays for the thrill of being in charge. Number seven, the storyteller plays for the love of a wondrous tale. Number eight, the performer plays for the show. Show off. 
Number nine, the craftsman. Place to build, to create, to destroy. <coughs> That was fun. You can see how each personality reflects the inherent desires we have as gamers and how the genres we choose to play satisfy them. Each of these above motivations are justifiable by the certain kind of control they allow the player to achieve. For instance, the collector seeks control in hoarding the best and rarest items, so they're likely to find appreciation in MOBAs, digital tabletops, or open world games. The director plays for the control of driving the events of the game, so they'll likely get a kick out of RPGs or action adventures involving choice. The craftsman wants control through mastery of the puzzles and constructions they create, so it's the portals and sandboxes of gaming worlds that they tend to enjoy the most. I count myself as a storyteller and a director because I play games predominantly for their stories. I seek control over narratives and crave an agency through interacting with characters and driving world events. That whole only you can save the world self-gratification stuff is my absolute thing. Clearly I just really like being made to feel important. <laughs> While I'd like to steer clear of escapism territory, like you can you can go away, just, just go right over there, okay. It's a clear incentive to play video games because they help us achieve a certain control that life might not always grant us. So if you, you know, zoom in on that, is it possible that we get a kick out of certain games because they better reflect who we are? In my first ever video on this channel, I looked into how the way we play video games, namely The Sims, tended to mirror our own beliefs and attitudes reflected in our gameplay, whether that shows in our choices, unconscious habits, or in how we choose to torture helpless characters. But I don't know, I'm just spitballing. So prepared to have your brain fiddled with uh, in a very appropriate way because we're talking about personality. Now, despite all the hype around personality types, another aspect of our lives we just love categorizing. It occurred to me that I actually have no idea what personality is. We talk about it like it's, you know, who we are because it is basically. But how do we pinpoint exactly what personality is? Let's clear things up then. Our personality is how our patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behavior can predict what we will do in a specific situation. If you you have a pattern of extroversion, being around people, will you be found shredding it on the dance floor? Or maybe you encounter a stressful dilemma where your inherent beliefs and values help you make a decision. Whatever event we encounter in our lives, it's our personalities that guide how we deal with them. Say the specific situation is, I don't know, selecting what game to play next. Could it stand to reason that our patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviours could actually play a key role in predicting what we're more likely to pick? A study done by the International Journal of Game-Based Learning Ooh, that's a mouthful. Offered highly variable questionnaires to a little under 300 people. First, defining their personality traits. Second, measuring how important certain gameplay features were to them. And third, gorging their gaming habits. 15 personality traits were connected with specific playstyles. For instance, extroversion translated into companionship or challenge, or imagination translated into fantasy or exploration. You get the picture. Their research is incredibly complex to the point where I had to read it over at least three times to actually understand it. But their general findings show a distinct connection between our values, represented by the gameplay styles we appreciate over others, and the games we tend to enjoy and therefore play more often. People who value challenge over exploration, for example, were more likely to pick up Celeste over Skyrim, while those who valued exploration over competition indicated an interest in single-player action adventures. I'll admit these findings are pretty vague and hard to generalise to millions of players around the world, but it shows how our values are strongly correlated with the sorts of playthrough experiences we enjoy the most. A different study published in the psychology of popular media journal revealed similar results, instead based on the big five personality traits. Agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness, neuroticismness, and extroversion. Through pairing the degree of each type with a gameplay style per genre, they found a heap of interesting correlations. Let's run through more examples. Generally, higher levels of openness were found to be positively correlated with RPGs and negatively correlated with first-person shooters, with the reasoning behind it being that elements of creativity, world-building, and role-playing involve more abstract processes than the reaction time and combat-heavy gameplay of shooters. Conscientiousness is another example, as people with a higher affinity tended to gravitate toward puzzlers or strategy games, while those who are more spontaneous will get way more satisfaction out of a fast-paced fighter or racing sim. Think about where you might sit with these traits. Is there a connection between them and the games you find yourself playing? Maybe if it's less obvious to you, think about the elements you enjoy most about your favourite genres. Is there a degree of control you love experiencing? Does this 
identify with how you perceive yourself and the person you are. Keeping it light, huh? Even if you can't find a distinctly clear connection between your personality and the games you play, which in some cases, thank God, there are tons of other reasons we fall in love with certain game genres that extend just beyond our personalities. I think we could probably make a case that our taste in video games is very similar to how taste in music works. Yes, we can go into the complex psychological breakdown of how sound waves resonate with the unique frequencies of our temporal lobe that it can pick up or something. But ultimately, the biggest factor that defines our taste is in our past experiences. This is the role that memory and nostalgia play in how we love certain genres reminding us of the good experiences we had growing up with them, playing them with siblings or parents or grandparents, of waking up early in the morning to get to Metal Gear Solid first, or of playing Mario 64 on the crappy library school computers. Oh, the nostalgia. One article I came across also spoke about the role sociology plays in defining our favourite genre, as it's often the communities formed around these shared interests that closely ties us with certain games. MMOs are a classic example, appealing to many people who love the camaraderie and support from other players, even if many don't consider themselves extroverted. And this extends to single players too. Fan bases around franchises, groups formed through a passion for world building and lore, the list goes on. The reason I love this sort of discussion is because it proves that video games are more than just platforms that allow us to express our personal values or self-interested desire to seize control. They form communities, subcultures, places we choose to invest ourselves in. This whole video, I've been talking about how our identity influences the kind of games we love the most, but really it's the games we love the most that influence our identity. At least it's like that for me. While it's not always obvious to us, our favourite genres are our favourites for a reason. Whether it's through social, external factors, or something deeper and more inherent, the games we love are the games that shape who we are. In saying that though, sometimes the reason we prefer some games over others has nothing to do with our personality. The beauty of video games is that they are accessible to all of us. They can take us anywhere, place us in the shoes of anyone, and empower us in so many different ways for so many different reasons. While certain genres may speak to us more than others, who's to say we can't enjoy venturing into the unfamiliar every once in a while? In falling in love with a completely different style of gameplay from the one we default to. If we only stick with what we know, think of all the memories and moments we'll miss. So go out there, jump on your backlog, and try something new. You might find your new favourite game where you least expect. As always, thank you for indulging in my content. I find it really interesting to talk about how certain games that we choose to play reflect who we are as people. You know, the idea of games being more than escapism is really important to me because it's just the truth. They play such a crucial role in defining who we are, in establishing meaningful relationships with other people, that's another reason. <laughs> and as I mentioned before, allowing us to attain a certain degree of control, especially during a global pandemic. So that's something. If you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to leave a comment and a like. It really helps me out so much. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe so that I can keep tabs with who's watching and who's liking the kind of stuff that I'm putting out there. Until next time, I have literally been obsessed with The Sims lately. So who cares about all the games that I should be playing and have bought a while ago and meant to play but haven't? I'm gonna go and play another thousand hours of the game that I I've already invested all my time in. So, bye.